Welcome back to America Decides and our ongoing coverage of the Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee. Thanks so much for staying with us. Money matters in politics, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fact. It may be an uncomfortable fact for you, but it matters. I want to bring in CBS News investigative reporter Dan Claydman, who joins us here in Milwaukee at the convention. Dan, there was a report yesterday afternoon after J.D. Vance was announced as Trump's running mate that Elon Musk may stroke a check for $45 million a month to a newly formed pro-Trump super PAC, meaning a super political action committee. Talk to us about the money that J.D. Vance might have avenues to that could be instrumental for the Trump campaign. Well, look, that is stunning on multiple levels. First of all, just the amount. All of a sudden, sort of out of nowhere, Elon Musk, richest man in the world, but he had not given a lot of money to politics. And now he's within the top five or ten all-time donors um, to uh, presidential campaigns or, or re-election efforts with this staggering uh, amount of money. If it um, comes through. It's if a it pledge. comes through. If it comes through. But it's a pledge. $45 million a month. That is a lot of money. Um, and what's also interesting about it is you now have the emergence of these uh, tech people who are not the traditional, more liberal-minded tech people, but actually kind of anti-establishment, more conservative tech people who are starting to pony up and give real money to Donald Trump. That may be a real shift that's worth pay paying attention to. Now, the big tech firms, now they're not necessarily in the big tech firms, they're sort of in that world, but there's been a tremendous conversation about the big tech companies getting too large and antitrust action, regulatory action being taken against them. Is this a hedge against that or is this a way to expedite the shrinking of some of their rivals? Look, with Elon Musk, it's hard to know. You know, it could be philosophical. I mean, you see his politics have been evolving uh, for a long time now, and he is all in with Donald Trump, and he is uh, pretty uh, negative about uh, Joe Biden. Whether it's a hedge, whether it's about business interests, you know, we don't really know. You know, the interesting thing is, he stayed on the sidelines for a long time. Some people think that because of his uh, his business interests, particularly SpaceX, uh, that he really depended on, on the government subsidies. And if you start giving money to one candidate and, and not the other, that candidate doesn't get in office, you may be in trouble. But he is, SpaceX is so big, the U.S. government is so dependent on SpaceX now that he doesn't really have that much risk to, to, to worry about. So, you know, my guess with, with Elon Musk um, is it's philosophical at this point. It's ideological. Now, there may be some benefits to giving this kind of money to someone who might be president that is, uh, you know, in, in a business sense. But I'm not sure that's what this is about. Do you, Dan, do you, have a, do you have any sense that J.D. Vance is an accelerator to this conversation or a new avenue opening up for the Trump world? Look, J J.D. Vance has been assiduously courting uh, billionaires and tech billionaires in particular for a long time. He is a very savvy politician who understands how important money is. The main example, which I wrote about for CBSNews.com, uh, is Peter Thiel, also a kind of iconoclastic, more conservative tech uh, entrepreneur. Uh, he bankrolled uh, J.D. Vance's Senate campaign to two million dollars. That is a lot of money. Uh, J.D. Vance knows how the game works. Dan Claydman, thank you so very much for your expertise. I really appreciate it.